everyone, it's Mandy from Designs by Miss Mandy, and today I'm excited to show you how to design layered cut files. Since it's fall, I decided to go with an acorn for our design today, and then since I usually work in paper as my main medium, I'm going to be doing this design with the finished product as paper in mind. So let's get started. As you can see, I have my um, acorn picture here, and I'm going to be tracing it with the pen tool. So I use the pen tool a lot, and let's get a color here so I can see it. Um, it's a really great tool for just about anything. I'm going to get a line here so I can see, make sure I'm centering it. And the more you use the pen tool, the better you'll get at it, and the faster you'll be able to do awesome designs. So I'm only going to trace half the acorn. Also, as if you hold shift, like I just did, then it'll make sure that the line that you're making is um, straight. Let me keep that on, actually. Okay, so I'm going to copy this. Now that I have half of my acorn traced, I'm going to copy, Command C, paste in front, Command F. Then I'm going to right click and go to transform and click reflect. Then this little window pops up and I can see it's reflecting vertically, which is what I want. I'm going to click OK, hold shift, and I'm going to drag it over. And then I'm going to use my white arrow selection tool to select these two points and press Command J to join them. And do the same thing down here. And now this makes it all one shape instead of two lines. So now I have my main acorn shape here. But I want to have the top be a different, um, I want to make it a different colored paper. And so I'm going to have to uh, section this off a little bit. So to do that, I'm going to make this line right here first. I'm going to select both the line and my acorn shape and copy it. Command C, paste in front, Command F. Right click, transform, reflect again. You're going to be pros at this. And then delete my extra shape. The reason I did it, you didn't have to copy the, the shape on top or the bigger shape if you don't want to. It's just um, when you're reflecting things like that, it'll reflect perfectly if you have an outside shape that's larger than the inside shape. Uh, I may be the only person that does that, but that's what I like to do. <laughs> Okay, and I just joined those anchor points together again, just like I did with my um, acorn shape earlier. And then I'm going, so I want this to match along perfectly with my acorn shape. And I could go try to go through and create the exact same pen lines that I did before, um, but it's going to be pretty tricky. So there's actually something else I'm going to do, and you can be really, really sloppy and just go all the way outside around your acorn. Obviously, this is not the same shape, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change these both to solid shapes right now. Um, and I'm going to copy this acorn shape again. Uh, copy, Command C, uh, paste in front, Command F. And I'm going to bring this shape, let's see, so I'm going to have this one, this random shape I created, and then this shape. I'm going down to my Pathfinder menu, and if you don't have Pathfinder, you can go to Window and select Pathfinder. And I'm going to click on this little button right here called Intersect. And as you can see, it took that weird shape that we had, and now it matches perfectly. The outer edges match perfectly with my acorn shape. So I'm going to show you that one more time, and maybe I'll change this to a different color just to show you. So I have my acorn shape underneath and I remember I duplicated it so I have two of them technically and then I have this other shape on top I'm going to Pathfinder and I'm going to click Intersect and there you go so now I have a whole other shape and it matches perfectly with my outside lines it's just beautiful that's exactly what I want. Alright so now I want to make some crisscross shapes um, over my acorn 
And to do that, I'm going to get my line segment tool. And I'm just going to come over here for a second and create some lines. I'll grab another color so that we can see it. Um, make sure to change this to lines, so it's not fill. And thicken this up a little bit. Maybe, yeah, it's a little too much. Okay, maybe 13. And then um, I'm just going to copy this and paste in front just like I did before. And then I'm just going to keep doing that over and over. Those aren't far enough apart. I'm going to try again. There we go. I'm just copying, pasting in front and duplicating it over and over again. I'm going to make these a little bit longer. And then now that I have a group of these lines, I'm going to copy, paste in front, and I'm going to reflect. There we go. Now I've got some nice crisscross shapes to go over my acorn. Um, but I don't want them to be lines. I'm going to want them to be um, a solid shape. So I'm going to go to Path and then click Outline Stroke. And that changes them from lines, if you saw that, undo and redo that again. It went from lines to being uh, shapes. And then I'm going to combine these all so that they're all going to be one shape now instead of a bunch of little shapes. Um, and click Unite in my Pathfinder menu. And now as you can see over here in my layers, this is all one shape. Okay. So I'm going to put this over on my acorn, I'm going to center it, scale it down to about where I want, okay that looks good. I'm going to hide it for now. So I don't want those um, cross hatches going all the way up the acorn. I kind of just want them right here on this round section. So I'm going to, um, I'm just going to go, I hope this makes sense, but I'm just going to um, create a line right here to cut off basically where I want those um, sections to end. And then I'm just going to do that messy thing that I did before and then duplicate this by going Command C, Command F, selecting with this and this, holding Shift to select both of them. And I'm going to click on Intersect, and now I have this shape is separate. So there's a couple things I'm going to need to do with this. So I'm going to uh, make a copy of this, Command C, Command F. I'm going to hide one for now. Just do that over here in my layers panel. I'm going to take this shape and switch it to outline. And for this, I'm going to want to make the outline about twice as thick as I actually want it. Okay, I'm going to go with about 22 points. Then go back to object, path, outline stroke. If this isn't making sense, I hope it will by the end. <laughs> Um, so now this is overlapping uh, this shape and I don't really want that. I want it to be flush with this um, outside acorn top shape. So I'm going to uh, copy this shape, Command C, Command F, and then I'm going to move this one over the top. Select both of them by holding Shift. And then I just did the same thing I've been doing and hit intersect. So that looks good, except for I don't really like this part. Whoops. There we go. To do that, I just um, made an extra shape and then hit uh, minus front while they're both selected. Okay, 
All right, hopefully you're able to follow that. Now I have this shape that I saved before and it was just hidden this whole time. And I have my cross hatches. And I'm going to have both of those showing now. I'm going to select both of them, my little oval and my cross hatches. And with both of them selected, I'm going to hit intersect. And now I have this cute little acorn top shape that has these cute little cross hatches and just looks adorable. Um, but these aren't quite connected right now, so I'm going to select both of them by holding shift as I select both and hit unite. And there we go. And you can change these colors around. You can play with um, colors, obviously, to change them to be whatever you'd like them to be. But um, if I'm happy with those colors, I'm now going to get rid of everything else. All my extra layers, any images, and I'm going to double check and make sure that the only thing I have is paths and compound paths and possibly shapes. So I see that I have two paths and a compound path. And if I want these cut out of three different kinds of paper, I just have to make sure they're three different colors, which they are, so we're in good shape. I'm going to save it as acorn, SVG, Okay, and then we're going to go over to Design Space. Upload. Now let's just see how this turned out. So now our little acorns seem to import into Design Space really well, so that's good news over here. If you don't like the colors, obviously it doesn't really matter what they are because whatever color paper you put into your machine is the color it's going to come out as. Um, but if you want to change the colors, you can. If you decided you wanted that to be hot pink for some reason. Or if you decided that you wanted this part to be the same color as the bottom part of the acorn, you could do that too. And this will make sure that they cut on the same uh, mat as each other and that you don't have to put the mat through uh, twice. Anyway, so there you have it. Uh, thanks for following along. I hope that you're able to see kind of how I my process works. Um, obviously you can play around with it and do your own thing, but that's um, those are a few tips and tricks on how I like to design layered cut files. So good luck and happy designing!